Hello, friends, and welcome back to the Brock Upside. Captain Marvel was directed by Anna Bowden and Ryan Fleck, and is about Carol Danvers, played by Brie Larson, who comes down to Earth in the year 1994 to stop the forthcoming Scroll invasion, team up with a young Nick Fury, and try to put together pieces of her past that is all quite a big mystery to her. So chances are, unless you've just been completely off the internet for the last couple of weeks and you live under a rock, you're probably well aware of the controversy surrounding this movie right now, whether it be some stuff about some things Brie Larson may or may not have said in an award show, or some possible agendas that Disney and Marvel had behind their backs when they were making this movie. And you know what? I've I've tried to understand it. I really don't. I've, you know, I, I get certain pieces of it, but I've been trying to just avoid it completely because I want to view this as a movie. Just it. It's a movie. It's a Marvel movie, but it's also just a movie with characters and plots and costumes and things like that. So we're just going to throw all that controversy aside and just talk about this movie as just that. A movie. Because guess what? Here on the Brock side, controversy is irrelevant. For the most part. So I would definitely say that I am a fan of Brie Larson. I do like her in a lot of the movies she's been in, like Room and Scott Pilgrim vs. The World. So I do like Brie Larson, but I think here she's just a bit of a mixed bag when it comes to playing Carol Danvers' Captain Marvel. Now, I don't know anything about the characters, so this is not coming from like a fan's perspective per se, but it just seems like whenever she's trying to spew out quips and one-liners, it just feels like she's trying really really hard, like she's trying way too hard to be funny, like she's just one of those people that doesn't realize she's not funny, but keeps telling jokes and keeps just forcing him out to try to be like Robert Downey Jr. or Chris Pratt or any of the other like really jokey Marvel characters. But really when she's not trying to shove jokes down your throat, I pretty much liked her performance for the most part. You know, I kind of liked her when she was getting real intense, you know, trying to track down the scrolls and be like, hmm. Are you a scroll? Are you a scroll? Are you a scroll? Hmm. And I really love her interactions with a young Nick Fury. I think these two get together very well together. You know, it's kind of a buddy cop feel. So I think moving forward, if they try to not make her be so jokey and quippy, because it just does not work for Brie Larson, I think her character will be a bit better received. You know, I am interested to see how she interacts with the Avengers in Avengers Endgame next month. So I do more or less look forward to seeing her again. But yeah, it's just not... Brie Larson's absolute greatest performance ever. And speaking of a young Nick Fury, Sam Jackson completely steals the show as a younger Nick Fury. It's fun to see Nick Fury, this character that we know that's this cynical, one-eyed director of S.H.I.E.L.D. that's just been through so much crap, to come back to him when he's a lot younger, he's got an actual sense of humor, he's kind of more witty, you know, he sees Goose the Cat, and he's like, oh, aren't you just the cutest thing? Which is exactly what I would have done as well, so of course he steals pretty much every scene he's in, and he's definitely the best character in the movie, which is kind of sad because this movie's called Captain Marvel, not Nick Fury, Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. Which was a movie that almost happened a long time ago with David Hasselhoff, but... We ain't living in those times now, are we? And speaking of Goose the Cat, he is definitely, or she, I really don't remember, it's not really specified that well, but Goose the Cat is definitely the second best, very close second best character in the entire movie. He's just this adorable orange cat that just purrs a lot and just is really friendly with Sam Jackson. You know, of course, me, I love cats, you know I mean? Come on. Look at what I'm wearing! So Goose the Cat was great, definitely steals the show even more than Sam Jackson does, arguably in some scenes, and I just really like Goose the Cat. I wish I had a cat just like that. Especially one that may or may not be a special alien species. And I did really like Ben Mendelsohn as the main scroll. Ben Mendelsohn is just really good in these kind of villainous roles, so he's pretty much good in everything he does as well. But the one disappointment I have character-wise is that Phil Coulson is also in the movie, a younger Phil Coulson, but he just feels kind of wasted because in a lot of scenes that he's in, he's basically just... 
You know, I do realize, of course, that Coulson was in every Phase 1 movie and he's one of the main characters of Age of the Shield, so there's plenty of Coulson to go around, but I don't know, I kind of just wish we could have seen a little bit more of him in this movie. So I think the brightest part about this movie are some of the characters and some of their interactions with each other. Everything else is just very okay to not that amazing. You know, it's filled with a lot of 90s nostalgia, just trying to give you like a lot of hint hint, wink wink moments like, huh, look at how slow computers used to be and oh look, she crash landed in a blockbuster video. The action is not all that memorable. It's visually not nearly as distinct as films like Thor Ragnarok or Guardians of the Galaxy. You know, there's just really no distinct style that sets us apart from other movies, especially ones that take place in space. So it just really kind of disappointing because everything just feel has it, it just feels kind of generic in the production design and the cinematography is nothing to freak out about and going back to action for one minute this movie probably has maybe the fourth or fifth best train fight sequence in a comic book movie because i guess every few years comic book movies need to have at least one fight sequence on a train you know for me it goes spider-man 2 batman begins the Wolverine, and then somewhere below that is this movie's train fight scene. And when the final battle sequence rolled around towards the end of the film, I just felt bored at watching it because it's just really not all that exciting. You know, there's just it's just a bunch of CGI laser blasts and people flying around. It's just it's just not the most exciting final battle we've ever seen in a Marvel movie. You know, that's just kind of the general complaint I have with this movie. I think a lot of people have as well, is that it just does not feel to the same it doesn't feel like it's at the same level of quality as the the other Phase 3 Marvel films because they've arguably made their best movies in this phase so far. You know, so I think this movie suffers from just coming after Thor Ragnarok, the Guardians of the Galaxy movies, and Infinity War to the point where it just, it, it just kind of falls flat when you compare it to those films. You know, it does kind of seem like this movie could have been made a little bit sooner than right before the fourth Avengers movie, so maybe then we could give it a little bit of slack. But I think besides that, the biggest gripe with this movie is that it just really doesn't feel that much like a Captain Marvel solo movie. This kind of feels just more like a big MCU prequel movie. You know, there's a lot of little hints and easter eggs to like future movies and stuff we've already seen before, so it's kind of like the 90s nostalgia stuff where it's like, huh? 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 You know what this is from, right? And, you know, some people do not like it that much. Me, I, I really like that kind of shit, you know, so it really doesn't bother me that much, but it does feel like it kind of takes over at times, so it really just does not feel like Captain Marvel the movie, it's just more like Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. in the late 90s. Oh yeah, and his Brie Larson, who had gave Nick Fury a pager, you know, several years ago for emergencies, but doesn't use it when aliens invade or robots take over. But nope, as soon as people are turned to dust, it's time to bring out the retro tech. Captain Marvel is by no means a bad movie. It's got these little hints and sprinkles of goodness throughout, but I think ultimately it's just kind of a forgettable movie. It's not nearly as good as a lot of the other Marvel movies we've gotten, especially in Phase 3. It could have been better, and I think just as far as female-led superhero movies go, I think DC just simply did it better. So all in all, Captain Marvel is a very okay Marvel movie. You know, I do look forward to seeing what Carol Danvers might Bring to the table with the Avengers Endgame, so I will be kind of interested to see what she does there, assuming she doesn't become like this overpowerful super savior of everything. So we'll just see how that goes. You know, who knows how much Captain Marvel we're gonna see after Endgame. We know with all the controversy and stuff going on. But then again, we're not here to talk about that, we're just here to talk about the movie. And we have for several minutes. I think it's time we wrap things up now. So, those are my thoughts on Captain Marvel. If you guys have seen this movie, or if you think your neighbor is a shape-shifting alien that kind of looks vaguely like the Green Goblin, let me know what's down below, and we'll see you on the bra. See ya.